now my mind is going off into a whole bunch of places along tribalism and um, it's what I preached on this past Sunday of the movement from um, from tribes to nations and what that looks like and what that means and and that process playing out in the books of Samuel that movement from tribal small family oriented groups to a, a nation and what that looks like and means. Um, in some ways, the pandemic has brought some of that to the surface. Eh? I mean, you see it in sort of the extreme ways with the way um, immigrants in some cases have been tossed out of the States um, or families like children separated from their parents and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but it's also um, been a matter of uh, how the pandemic has affected wealthier nations versus those that are struggling um, with poverty and so on. Yeah, that that sort of uh, a segregation of identity, mm -hmm. really. Um, these are the Americans that are the real Americans or the desirable ones or whatever, according to those with more power. Yeah. And even political systems in different countries working or not working. I mean, New Zealand sort of held up as this beacon of hope, you know, if, if people could sort of care about each other and have a leader who cares about the people, you'll do well. Um, and uh, by contrast, you have maybe Brazil or somewhere where the leader evidently doesn't care the same way and is more interested in the way the economy is being hit kind of thing. I mean, it helps that New Zealand's an island nation. That's a, a big piece of it too. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I'm curious when we look back at the politics of this age, maybe we're pulling a little off track off the theology, but uh, the, the politics of this age. Right. That, if there'll be anyone to look back at it. Yeah. <laughs> I laugh. Well, but... you know, that's, that, that's, <clears throat> another, that's another theology that I'm getting a lot of it, it is like end time theology in this, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm hearing about it from a lot of people. What, what, is, what is end time theology? And maybe that's a whole other conversation to have. Now, you know, there's a conversation topic. What is your end time theology? Well, but that's, I think that apocalyptic imagery yeah. and theology is, has been a huge part of this past eight months and probably yeah. will continue uh, and a colleague posted something recently about that. I can't remember what exactly it was, but it it brought up in my mind. I'm I'm a little worried for all the people who are posting. You know, 2020 is this horrendous year. I can't wait till it's over. And it's like, well, what if? You know, like, and, and that in a way is a theology, or at least a. Mythology. A way of thinking about yeah, what's yeah, happening yeah, right yeah. now. Oh, it's just this bad year. It's yeah. just a bad time. It'll. Sh it's a short bad time. We're going to get through it, and then we'll be back to something close to normal, right? Yeah. That is sort of. Um, I wouldn't say it's quite a theology, but it's it's it is an approach to the world and and to what's going on. It would be another approach. To, <laughs> and it would be my approach <laughs> to to say, well, we're, we're expecting things to get worse and worse in terms of climate mm -hmm. issues, right? Um, we can also see the trajectories we're on uh, socially and with economics and politics, uh, which those are more easy to change, of course, than the trajectory of the climate. But uh, we can expect that 2021 is not going to be a whole lot better than 2020, and it may even be worse, right? So what then is a theology, a way of viewing ourselves in that, that is a healthy one and isn't just depressing or anxiety invoking, right? Mm. <laughs> and this is sort of what I'm getting on is what is theologies that we're drawing on or that might help us through this? I'm, I'm hopeful um, in this time. I think there's been sort of a leveling that's happened through this pandemic time um, that we're seeing that it's not just the systems that we've created um, like economies and currencies and all these things that end up throwing things out of balance in the world, um, that, that it's not just those things that tie us together. I mean, a, a virus doesn't care if you're rich or poor, what your skin color is, where you live in the world. Um, evidently, we're all fair game for the virus. 
And, um, and so I think that started to get people thinking more about some of those things around universal basic in income, um, about health care for everyone, about access to opportunities and resources and so on. And um, so there, there's something hopeful, I think, in that as well. Or as bad as 2020 has been, um, maybe there's some leveling that's going on that's not such a bad thing. I, I would I would emphasize leveling, not leveled, because I think while the virus doesn't care what your economic situation is, I mean there is I mean healthcare does right, yep. um, and and so there's in that sense, or the ability that I have to stay home and work from home is very different than someone else's ability not to do it to be on the 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 front lines. So sure, if 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 I get the virus, yeah, it doesn't care about me as much. Uh, or it cares about me as much as it cares about the next person. But there, there's a lot of other pieces at play uh, mm -hmm. in that. Yep. I, but I think what it's done is it's taken some of the systems which we've created that have been restricted. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, well, I, I see it with the American election, the trajectory of Trump's popularity over the past while and how it's kind of um, exposed the lies that he's been putting out there about the pandemic and the um, and the U.S.'s response to the pandemic, hmm. and uh, and yeah. Anyway, um, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, we're yeah. in a position of um, privilege, and so we can access things should we be sick, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think I think the leveling idea that that it it, it, it what it does is it it I think puts a good amount of fear into everyone a little bit and it's probably good that we all deal with it, at least a small dose of what some people deal with every day and hopefully that empathizes those of us who don't deal with that fear or anxiety every day um, in a new in a new way that would be where i'd see that hope yep. that our money and systems can't necessarily keep us totally safe yeah I mean, yeah we're all vulnerable keep, creatures yeah, yeah. It keeps us safer but not not entirely mm -hmm. safe and and when we break through the wall that convinces ourselves that we're totally in control suddenly we're not totally in control of mm -hmm. things that illusion is shattered then uh, then then you can start having those 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 relationships built with people that i mean have never had that delusion to begin with mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm thinking about, Tyler, about what you said, uh, that there's some hope because there's some movement building, uh, to, um, that there's been more energy and push and pressure building around the ideas of changing systems so that people are better taken care of who have been made vulnerable by them. So like basic income and things like that and, and like better health care. Uh, and I think there's also... Uh, a counter reaction that's just as strong, which that sort of building up of these, you know, polar sides is apocalyptic imagery as well, right? That sort of, mm -hmm. you know, war between good and evil. <laughs> if you like, if you know, if you're my parents, you think that the the good side is the side that I think is the evil side, right? But <laughs> <laughs> but you still have these like opposing forces building because um, the stakes were always high, but now they're higher in people's attention or there's more energy building mm -hmm. for it or um, huh. yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what would be making the difference that would cause that, but it's, it's people have been mobilized. Mm -hmm. It seems like. Yeah. Well, I mean, a couple of hopeful signs that I've seen just during this pandemic time has been um, voices for change in terms of our response to the climate crisis. Um, I think there's been more voices for that. And then also the, like the Black Lives Matter movement um, and, uh, and even just more books that have been published this year on racism and, and some of that conversation coming to the surface as well um, because there's been uh, the, the balance in terms of who's getting infected by the virus in the States, for example, is tipped against those who are not able to access healthcare the same way and people who are in impoverished situations or 
frontline workers who don't get paid as well and, and those kinds of things. So that things have been revealed that weren't as well known uh, mm. or as broadly known before. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the stories uh, coming out, videos coming out of um, police brutality, for example, mm -hmm. that, could, that could so easily be covered up before. That's yeah, right. I think there's a, I think there's a real hopefulness in truth, in that truth. Um, being made known. Yeah, I, I totally hear what you're saying with the tension because I think it does, it riles people up for a variety of reasons. I mean, if um, just by the color of my skin and um, my sexual orientation and my gender and all those kinds of things, I've got privilege that starts to erode some of that. Um, like I'm not in quite the comfy spot I used to be. And then people can work on that. Like I'm thinking, um, extremist politicians or, or people with a, a platform and um, and so you end up I, I, I do hear what you're saying in terms of there being sort of a polarizing that can happen in that too. Tim um, maybe it's not fair bringing your Sunday service into it but <laughs> <laughs> when you were praying for uh, the Mi'kmaq fishers and for the communities there for the whole situation Mm -hmm. I was touched by the way you prayed, not for this, just for the side that we obviously think is, is right and being injured and vulnerable, but also for the vulnerability within um, white fishermen uh, mm -hmm. who, that might be causing them to act the way they're acting. And that's not the way you worded it, but it, it just brought up something for me that when these sides get polarized like this, like it's easy for me to think of strong evil force, mm -hmm. you know, the big corporation that's, that takes the lobsters, right? Mm -hmm. And the small indigenous, you know, small modest indigenous fishery that's being attacked but the people who are attacking are not that big corporation. Right. They're local fishers who are worried. And maybe that's misplaced. Um, <laughs> like maybe that's, um, maybe it's, it's systems, right? And the system they're working in and the system that uh, employs them that is causing their precarious situation and their fear and they're putting that onto the indigenous fishers as, you know, there's there's seeing them as, you know, the problem that might make their them lose their livelihood, right? Yeah. And maybe that's sort of a an image for all of the polarization that's happening, uh, especially in the Western world. I don't know how it's playing out elsewhere, but that there are really bad systems, and I think we can say. You know, e even where those systems supply some good, that there's some really bad foundational things in them, right? Pharaoh and Caesar. Um, and yet the people who get caught up in those, that, you know, they're caught up in this because they feel vulnerable and they feel fear, right? Mm -hmm. And they, because they believe the stories that they have access to and that they're told. So I think I just think it was really helpful to show that it's it's not that the individuals are necessarily evil. Yeah, it's it's I mean there's a few things that I would say to to that. One is I mean just to emphasize that sense of systems um, systems are evil, um, and 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 we get we get caught in them, and we're either complicit or not complicit, but it's still the system which which does this, um, and we participate. I mean there there is free will. I'm not everything is the fault of that. But it is the reminder that this comes from very human place that all of us have, right? Like that, that all of us have. So one thing that I'm always frustrated with sort of the left or the progressives or, or whatever is a complete and utter lack of pastoral ability, uh, which I think um, it hampers it. I mean, right. I, I've often said this before, uh, yeah, I vote left wing, but I would much rather hang out with a conservative on one-on-one -on -one 
my experience living in rural Canada is a very gentle, if you're in the in-group, and this is the key, if you're in the in-group, it's as hospitable and loving and caring and genuine a community as you can get. If you're not in that in-group, then it's a whole other story and therein lies the problem. But if, you know, and, and the left often forgets that and often forgets that, that sense of hospitality and pastoralness in embracing people caught within these issues. It's why the um, uh, Hillary Clinton's um, word, what, what, what did she say, call everyone? Not degenerates, but <laughs> wh whatever, whatever it was she called. That's why it resonated so much. And I'm like, boy, that was just a dumb thing to say because it completely forgets the humanity of these people, right? Yeah. Um, right. And this, this is part of the silo, right? Or of the yeah. not being rooted in a broader community. Absolutely. Absolutely. And both not sides, being able to understand. Yeah. And, and both sides do it. I, like both sides forget the humanity and, and it's not okay and it's not good, but it's what happens. And so we have to break down that. We have to remember the humanity of the other, right? First and foremost. Um, the other piece is uh, another theologian that I like. And when we talk about being rooted in the earth, I often think of Sally McFaig. Um, oh yeah, and her her her, her theologies, uh, her, her earth earth centric theology, and what she said, I believe it was her that said that um, uh, environmental theology or creation centered theology is the liberation theology for white upper and middle class people, because it's the reminder that these systems were all trapped in these systems. We may benefit from them on a material matter in some way or other, but we're still trapped in it. And it, when it comes to earth in the long term, we're not all going to benefit from it. No one is going to benefit from it. Everyone is going to face consequences of it. Right. right. And so that's what binds us together is this sense of, you know, do I benefit from racism? Yes, I, I benefit from a racial, racially unjust system. Do I benefit from the patriarchy? Yes, absolutely. Do I benefit from an earth destroying system? Maybe short term, but long term? No. I, materially, I do not benefit from that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what can bind us into all these other liberation theologies and can bring us all together and unite us um, is the sense. The, the realization, oh, wait, we are caught in all these systems. I'm not above this system. I'm not improved by this system. I'm not better because of this system. I'm just like everyone else. And so it's trying to find ways to see how, whether it's, uh, I mean, my heart goes out to the, the, the indigenous fishermen. I think what happened to them was incredible completely unjust and it's not just the single act it's the whole system which allowed it to happen uh which stood back and, and everything but can the fishermen see that they're caught in the same system uh sorry the settler fishermen see that they're caught mm -hmm. in the same unjust system that the indigenous fishermen are you right. know that 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 it 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 screws them as much as it screws the indigenous people in some ways in some ways not um but but they're just as much caught in it and they, they face negative consequences because of it. Um, when you're talking system, you're also talking generations too. Uh, oh, generations deep. Yeah, yeah. Because when um, we can benefit from fossil fuels and um, mm -hmm. like shares and stocks in uh, um, ESO or mm -hmm. uh, whatever, we'll do well for now, but it's like blessed are or cursed are your family yeah. the next the seventh generation right yeah and, mm -hmm. uh, for sure mm -hmm. yeah and it's the boards of the house like it's the boards of the floor that we're standing on right it's mm -hmm. it's it's you know we can see the problem and here we are living in it and here we are benefiting from it because that's all there is right now for mm -hmm. us where we are the options are not it's not like we can we have the option to do much differently we can do some differently we can make some choices but our, our options are constrained. And that's, um, that's the nature of the, of the systemic nature of evil, right? It, it's people say, well, you know, you should just live better. Well, it's not as simple as that, right? You, you, you just can't. It's so ingrained into everything that we do as a society into how we live such that in many ways, we can't live in our society unless we participate in, our, in this system. Mm -hmm. and, and when we're bound in that way, and that, that, that's not just 
environmental. I mean, that's racial, that's patriarchal, that, that's all these things. Um, it's so ingrained. That's what makes it systemic. It's not just, you know, well, hey, I like black people. So therefore I'm not part of the racial unjust, the, the racially unjust system. Right. You know, it, it, it's no, you are because you can't live another way in our society. That's what makes it so insidious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so to, to close, Tyler, you already talked a little bit about the hope you find in it. Um, I'm mindful as I say this of, you know, the, the me of my, not even youth, but of 15 years ago saying, <laughs> saying, you know, hope is a, hope is not a useful concept, right? Because you either do things and you act or you don't, right? Like, <laughs> um, anyways, I, I, that's another side thing, but um, hope can be a pretty bland word. It can be used in a very shallow way. Mm -hmm. um, complacent in a sense, is that what you're saying? Sorry? That you can become complacent. Oh yeah, well, it can just be sort of a, a self-deception even, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, well, I'm hoping 2021 will be better, right? Like, or, and, and maybe we do really hope that, but it, it can also be just a sort of a, um, a helplessness in a way. It's like, a, yeah. So, so I want to be aware of that in asking where you find the hope and, and uh, where do you find a realistic hope? What are you drawing on? Um, what music or TV show or uh, idea or experience? Uh, I would say, for one thing, where I'm serving and my uh, vocation for the time being is new still. Um, I mean, it feels in some ways that this pandemic has been going on for years, but I mean, I'm still in my first year <laughs> mm. at, uh, uh, serving in this context. And so um, there's some new life and spirit just in getting to know people and um, and being able to sort of let people know about me in this particular context. Um, included in that has been this new venture of online church. Um, mm -hmm. It's brand new for um, for the community where I'm serving in terms of my own experience with it, I've dabbled before, but I've never sort of engaged it at this level. And um, and it's meant all kinds of really cool and for me, life-giving collaborations. Um, it's meant a little bit of a learning curve for some folks, but um, I would say for a few of the young people who are musical, especially, it's meant um, them being creative in new ways and us being able to find ways of, of doing music at a distance. And um, so that, I mean, that's not the whole thing, but that's a, a piece of it. And a, I would say a significant piece in the last while um, and moving from one song to the next kind of thing. So, sorry, I was gonna say, so, so would that be like the resourcefulness and the willingness, the, the commitment of people to, to do things together that matter? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Tim, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to add my my answer to the question for me. Um, you, you said uh, talk about hope and how hope is a bit can be a bit deceptive. I think of uh, Bonhoeffer's distinction between cheap grace and costly grace. And so I think hope is the same. There's cheap hope and there's costly hope. Or as Joan Chittister referred to it as there's a there's marshmallow hope and there's marble hope. Um, nice. <laughs> and so what do you what do you what do you do with that? Um, for me, it's, uh, you know, we watch every night we watch, you know, we just finished watching Schitt's Creek again. Um, and we're watching the good place again. And these are, you know, I don't know, they're nice, light, funny shows. Um, and there's a hunger out there for them. And that's kind of hopeful for me that people want this, that people crave having just this small pieces of joy and optimism in the world and that enough people want that. So there's something um, actionable there. 
so that mm. would be my my hope amidst this so uh the hell in a hand basket um take on what's happening well while there may be ways in which it's true you know that our society or our world are going to hell in a hand basket in terms of climate and um justice issues um so many ways <laughs> mm -hmm. uh of, you know values ability to be in healthy relationship like all these things at the same time there is uh, so much present and and so much obvious in the world, so many people in little ways. And and I, I think you mentioned music, Tyler, and uh, in writing for TV and, and movies and such that there's in, in art, there's been a lot of expression, I thought, that has been uh, beautiful in this last eight months, or maybe it's just in this last eight months that I've been paying attention to it, I don't know. But um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's little ways for me. There's little ways that I've, I mean, I get hope and this is not for, you know, for any sort of long-term vision, but just, I get hope seeing the sky and the branches out my window when I wake up and that the birds are still hopping around doing their thing. And, and, you know, in, in the face of environmental disaster, on its way that's I don't know it's just that now is meaningful I guess that's what it is it's now is meaningful and every one of these creatures is meaningful mm. and good and the commitments and the relationships and what people care about so much of it is good um and that's true in spite of the bad I think that's it that there's there's so much that's worth so much uh mm -hmm in all that we experience yeah i don't know i got no perfect answers for <laughs> <laughs> and i'll close with a blessing sure uh and i'll do that's hilarious i need my hands to do the blessing so i had to take the mute off <laughs> <laughs> off of temporary mute so peace that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>